In the next few minutes, learn about how Minnesota law requires agencies to analyze pay structures for evidence of gender inequity. Learn how to use a job evaluation system to determine the comparable work value of each employee class in your organization. Learn about state requirements for pay equity implementation reports and maintaining equitable pay relationships and effects of noncompliance. The Minnesota Pay Equity Act requires local government agencies to evaluate each job in the political subdivision and to establish equitable compensation relationships between job classes that are male-dominated, female-dominated, and balanced in order to eliminate sex-based wage differentials. This means that job classes in the agency meeting the definition of a covered job class must be evaluated and assigned job evaluation points to provide a basis on which to evaluate the relationship between job value and wages. Every three years, an agency must issue a report to the state to show it's in compliance with the pay equity statute. In 1984, the Minnesota legislature passed a bill extending pay equity to all local governments in the state. The law requires each local government to analyze its pay structure for evidence of inequities and to report this information to the Department of Management and Budget. Most Minnesota local government agencies are also subject to the Equal Pay for Equal Work law, which is a different law from the Pay Equity Act, but also prohibits discrimination based on sex. Pay equity is designed to address the problem of wage structure in which there is one pay pattern for jobs performed mostly by men and another pay pattern for jobs performed mostly by women. It's important to understand that compensation programs have three parts, pay level, pay structure, and pay method. The pay level is simply the level an employer pays in comparison to other employers. The structure is the relationships among the jobs in the organization, and the method is the set of policies and procedures for paying individual employees. Pay equity primarily affects pay structure, not pay level or pay method. An employer still may have a pay level that's different from other local government agencies, and the agency still may pay more for recognizing individual seniority and performance. One way to do this is to establish salary ranges for each job class and reward employees for seniority, performance, or both by moving them through that salary range. Every agency must have a job evaluation system to determine the comparable work value or comparable value of the work performed by each class of its employees. Options for job evaluation systems are using the state job match, using or modifying systems developed by other employers, designing your own system, or purchasing a privately owned or a consultant's system. No matter what job evaluation system is used, it must be updated to account for two things, new employee classes and any changes in factors affecting the comparable work value of existing classes. In addition, when substantially modifying your job evaluation system or adopting a new system, you must notify the Commissioner of the Department of Management and Budget. Agencies should note that the results of any job evaluation system and subsequent reports may be used in any proceeding or action alleging discrimination. There are certain issues where collective bargaining and pay equity laws intersect. Let's take a look. These intersections of pay equity and labor law include where agencies must meet and confer with exclusive representatives of their employees on the development or selection of a job evaluation system. A report containing the results of the job evaluation system must be provided to exclusive representatives of employees to be used by both parties in contract negotiations. In interest arbitration, for any class other than balanced, the arbitrator shall consider pay equity, including results of a job evaluation study and any employee objections to that study, together with other standards appropriate to interest arbitration. And finally, the provisions of the Pay Equity Act do not diminish an agency's duty to bargain in good faith. Local government agencies with one or more employees must file a pay equity implementation report every three years as required by the department. 
The form provided for your implementation report requires that the following information be submitted. A list of all job classes in the political subdivision. The number of employees in each class. The number of female employees in each class. An identification of each class as male-dominated, female-dominated, or balanced. The comparable value of each class is determined by the job evaluation system. The minimum and maximum salary for each class and the amount of time and employment required to qualify for the maximum. Any additional cash compensation and any other information requested by the Commissioner. Employers must maintain equitable pay relationships and submit additional reports as required by the Department generally every third year. The Department monitors compliance on an ongoing basis and reports to the Legislature annually. The procedures for imposing or appealing penalties still apply to those agencies found in compliance at one time but found not in compliance at a future date. Based on the Pay Equity Implementation Report and any other information requested by the Department, a number of tests are used to analyze the information submitted and determine compliance or non-compliance. If an agency is found to not be in compliance, a notice will be issued. An agency that disagrees with such a finding may notify the Commissioner and will be given a defined period of time during which additional information may be submitted for reconsideration of the finding. Agencies may appeal a penalty by filing a Notice of Appeal with the Commissioner within 30 days of the Commissioner's notification of the penalty. No penalty may be imposed when the appeal is pending. And finally, agencies may contact the Minnesota Department of Management and Budget, Human Resource Management Division, for specific assistance. The League of Minnesota Cities Human Resources and Benefits Department will also discuss any information or questions that you might have.